Hello, everyone. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Awesome, thank you. Trying to figure out a way that I can fit all of your names and your boxes on my screen too, but my screen is only so big. Let's see. This will do. All right, give me a thumbs up too if you see a uh, PowerPoint screen that says the physical demands of a soccer game and how to train for them. Yes, okay. Is that all you see or do you see my video too and your peers' videos? Both, everything? Good, okay. I'm hoping for a smooth uh, electronic um, experience here. Let's hope that these slides all work. Okay, let's see. We have got a lot of people. Good. Awesome. So before we get started, um, I see a lot of new names, a lot of new faces. So I'll just introduce myself. Uh, my name is Sierra Gregory. I coach um, 2006 girls and 2004 girls. Um, and then during the fall, I coach um, 2011 girls. So I have coached three teams at Salvo and um, I am studying athletic training in graduate school right now. So um, athletic development is kind of uh, my passion along with soccer. So I'm glad that I get to combine the two here with you guys. Um, feel free throughout the presentation. We're gonna be getting up and moving a little bit um, and then having points where we're kind of just talking through the presentation. So if you have any questions at all, feel free to unmute or um, I think I can see the chat. If you send a message in the chat, I should be able to see that. Um, so again, just feel free to unmute. You can interrupt me, it'll be okay. Um, so to first start off, this is our first week and so I just want to do kind of like an intro to athletic development and how that plays a role in soccer. So um, there's a lot of aspects in soccer that we train during practice. Um, a lot of coaches think about the tactical piece of soccer um, and the technical pieces of soccer and those are usually with the ball. We're going to talk a lot about things that you can do to improve your athleticism. So yes, all of these things are gonna be geared towards soccer, but really they could help you in any sport that you play um, beyond soccer as well. So this will, this will be great for you guys, multi-sport athletes, um, physical demands of a soccer game and how to train for them. Here we go. All right, I think, <laughs> there. All right, so we're gonna go over the demands of the game. So soccer is a really unique sport. Obviously you all know that. Um, let's see, perfect. Okay, so the first demand of the game that we're gonna talk about is speed. So when, you guys can feel free to answer this, just unmute yourself. Um, when during a game do you need to use your speed? Pretty simple here, just give me some answers. When you lose the ball and you have to go back and get it. Good. So when you lose the ball and you have to go back and chase after it. Good. Making runs off the ball. Making runs off the ball. Yes. If you're on a breakaway. On a breakaway. Yes. Any others? Of course, there are some, but we'll talk a little bit more about speed later on here, too. All right. Next one is agility and I'm, I'm categorizing this with speed because I want to talk a little bit about all the examples that we just got were making runs off the ball. You're moving in a forward direction. You're running towards a spot to get there. That's good. You wanna get there with speed. Another example that someone gave was on a breakaway, right? It's you, the defender, and you're both running towards the ball. You're running forward. Agility I like to think about is speed in every other direction but forward so 
side to side movements and backward movements. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. And um, I'm sure all of you have done some agility work in your trainings before. All right, strength. We got upper body strength and lower body strength. Um, when would, you can unmute yourself, when would upper body strength be good in soccer? Not get pushed over by a kid who's a foot taller than you. Yeah, not get pushed over. So you have your shoulders up a little bit, you have your arms out, being able to hold the um, defenders off. Good. Other uh, Others? Any shoulder to shoulder contact. Shoulder to shoulder contact. Good. Shielding the ball. Shielding the ball. So same thing in that same position. Your arms are out or an extended arm. Good. We're forgetting uh, about it. But... Say that again. The strength of your like kick in soccer, like your shot. Good. So your upper body, are you talking about like your winding, like your wind back before you're yeah. shooting? Yep. What about goalkeepers? They probably use a lot of upper body strength. What about throw-ins? Yeah. So those are just uh, other examples too. All right. Our next um, imbalance. We talked about that with shooting. So um, good shoulders, strong shoulders. When you stick your arms out to be able to balance your center of gravity, you notice a lot of um, a lot of athletes when they're off balance, um, or even just people, if you look out on a, on a snowy, icy day out your window, you probably see people slipping around and they're probably going to have their arms out like this to try to keep that balance. So the stronger your shoulders are, the better balance you're going to be able to keep. And injury prevention, we'll talk about that as well. All right. Endurance. Can anyone give me just a quick example or definition of what endurance is? It has the start of the word is endure, which means last. So it's like a lasting through an entire game. Yeah, lasting, being able to last for the entire game. I like that. We'll go with that one. All right, coordination, examples or definition. As a goalie, you need to have like good hand eye coordination so that way you're not like missing every ball. Yes, hand eye coordination. Perfect. All right. So now we're gonna go into all of these. Can you guys, is this uh, video playing for you? This, okay. All right, so in this video, I'll give you a few seconds, but you should be able to find speed, strength, endurance, and coordination all in this one video. I'll give you a few seconds to find a moment in the video, it'll just keep replaying, to find a moment in the video where you can find each of these skills. All right, somebody point out uh, speed. At the end of his move, he immediately takes a step and puts on speed. Good, so as soon as he finishes his move, he just roll over, boom, change the speed. Good. How about strength? To get past the defenders and like push past them. So lower body strength in order to get that speed as well. And then you can also see, I'll just add on to that with the strength, the upper body. Watch as he's doing his move. He's trying to fake out the defenders by trying to go one way. So he sticks out his right arm just right there before he gets through the two defenders. He sticks out his right arm to keep his balance there. So that would be upper body strength. How about endurance? Does anyone see the little detail on the screen that shows us endurance? Uh, it's in the 93rd minute. Yes. Yes, this is in the 93rd minute. So they're in they're in extra time. He's probably been playing most of the game. At the 93rd minute, still has enough left to give in order to do that move, take that speed, and ha still have the strength to be able to do that. Good. How about coordination? He coordinates with one of his partners and he passes it to one of his partners. Good. So teammate coordination, they're probably over there. He's not passing it to no one. They're probably up at the top of the six. Good. How about um, 
I know we talked about hand-eye coordination. You can talk about the goalkeeper tracking. Or what about um, foot, um, foot eye? That's not really a thing. But your brain mm -hmm. to your feet, that coordination of his move that he does. That's the kind of coordination we're going to talk about here is how can he you has a coordinate? Lot of flight. Say that again. Jacob? He has a lot of like um, control over the ball. Yeah. His control over the ball is what we're going to really look for um, when we talk about coordination. Perfect. Okay. All right. So, like I said, we're going to kind of dive deeper into these categories. That was kind of just our outline. So speed and agility. I want you to kind of brainstorm a list of when speed is utilized in soccer. So like we talked about speed, straightforward, you're running in a straight line. We talked about the, the breakaways and the making runs. Um, when we talk about agility, going backwards, going to side to side. So depending on a position in a game, I want you to think of who on the field uses the most forward speed, who on the field uses the most backward speed, so backpedaling, shuffling backwards, and then who on the field uses the most side-to-side -side speed, okay? So just think of number-wise what positions utilize those. I'll give you a few seconds and then I'll go ahead and ask. All right, forward speed. Outside backs. Outside backs, good, forward speed. Others. Forwards. Yeah, yep, they may be named after the type of running that they do, good. How about um, backward speed, backpedaling? Bullying. Goalie, good. What would be a time in a game when a goalie would have to utilize that speed going backwards? When a player is dribbling at them. Okay, good. So when a player is dribbling at them, and why would they not just turn around and run and run forwards? Why is it good for them to run backwards? So they can always keep an eye on the ball. Yeah, good. They can always keep an eye on the ball. Perfect. I'm looking for another answer. What is something that defenders do? Drop back. Good, they're going backwards. How about when you're 1v1 with an attacker? What are you doing when you're defending? They apply you pressure. Shuffle. You shuffle, it starts with a J. Jockeying. 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 Jockeying, yeah, yeah. So jockeying is definitely a part of agility because you're kind of going side to side. You're going a little bit diagonally and you're moving backwards both at the same time. So that's a good agility um, skill to practice, especially for people that play um, the four, five, two, three, the six, um, kind of those more defensive positions. And of course the goalkeeper as well. All right. So here's a little, uh, little fact for you guys. On average, sprints are 10 to 30 yards long and they happen every 45 to 90 seconds in a game. So if you have an hour long game, how many, let's do some wild guesses, or maybe you know the math. How many uh, sprints in a game is that? 60, 70. 60 to 70? 200. 200. 150. 150. Okay. So for a 60 minute game, that would be somewhere between 80 and 125 sprints per game. So of course it changes depending on what position you play, um, depending on of course how your team plays um, at the pace that you're playing. So these are mainly, when we talk about sprinting, that's mainly high speed sprints lower um lower speed like striding jogging those happen obviously more often okay backward and side to side speed 
This, these are, you guys can see those, the pictures of the cones. So these are examples on how to train just simple, simple backward and side to side speed. So that's our agility piece. Um, I'm gonna have you guys, yep, there it is. Okay, so looking at these two cone exercises, I'm gonna look at the bottom one here with just the two cones. So you're starting in the middle and the beginner, the kind of the beginner level of this would be to have two feet in the middle and you're taking a step and a step over and then a step and a step over the cones, okay? In order to kind of ramp that level up, you can go single leg over and then in order to ramp that up even more, get some coordination in there, close your eyes and go single leg over, okay? I'll show you guys this too. This is just kind of a simple, just like an outline of what you can do to train your agility. So we're gonna take a little bit of a break out here and I want you each to create one speed exercise and one agility exercise. And then you can volunteer to kind of show us. And I'll definitely show you um, that bottom cone exercise. And because I know that you guys probably don't have cones, if you do, awesome, use them. Um, but if you don't, you can use anything. I had the younger kids were using pillows, tennis shoes, um, toys, literally anything that you that you can use. So go ahead, I'll give you about 30 seconds to think of and demonstrate a speed and an agility. You can combine them if you'd like to. All right, go ahead. All right, does anyone want to share an agility exercise? So Ellie? like the exercise that I have was really like on like the, um, the out of bounds line. So what my team does is we jump forward um, across the line and then back and then we sprint um, 20 to 30 yards. And okay. then we do it too. Good. So do you do, you said you do that side to side too? Yes. Good, so you do forward, forward and back, and you do side to side, and then sprinting. Yeah. Good. Um, how, what, what is the distance that you sprint, do you know? Uh, like 10 to 20 yards. Cool, so that's a perfect example of when we talk about speed and we talk about the sprints, that aligns exactly well with the on average, um, the length of sprints in a soccer game. So that's good that it aligns with um, what you're going to be experiencing in a game too. Good. Thank you for sharing. Anyone else? Alex, it looks like you have cones. You want to share with us what you got going? I kind of combine the two where you kind of sprint up to one cone and then you go through right or left and then kind of back pedal back and do it over. Okay. Show it. Good, so you got forward, backward speed, and then the side to side shuffling. Perfect. So things like that, you could, you could complete maybe, if you were gonna do say like 10, 10 of those forward, backward, and then the shuffling, and then just take a rest and then repeat. That could be a really good workout where you're definitely focusing on that agility piece and the speed. And depending on, again, on what position you play, Maybe if you're a defender, you want to focus a little bit more on that back pedal. So maybe your back pedal is a little bit longer. Or maybe if you're a forward, you want to focus more on that forward sprint. So your sprint is a little bit longer. You can just really vary where the cones are or where the objects are that you're um, running to. So depending on whatever position you want to train for, that those are tips on how you can change it to that. 
Um, if you're a center mid, you can add in some more side to side. Um, maybe a few cones side to side. So you're doing more like six side shuffles to one side, six side, so side shuffles to the other side, um, things like that. Good. Thank you for sharing, you guys. Let's see. All right. Next one. We're going for some strength here. So we already talked a little bit about um, during a game events where you would need some upper body strength. And then again, events where you would use your lower body strength. So I included this little video to demonstrate both the importance of upper body and lower body strength. Um, this one, especially again, I'm gonna emphasize the balance portion of it. So upper body, just really watch how this player is moving his arms. So first, before he makes contact with the defender, he's moving his arms in order to get that power to go forward. Um, that power to go forward while dribbling, that's helping him go faster. Um, that would be a good upper body. And then also the balance. After the defender sticks his leg out, he spreads, he um, widens his stance and also widens his arms. So he's helping himself balance with that upper body. Um, and then lower body, same thing with the balance. As soon as he spreads his arms, like I said, he spreads his, his feet far from each other, right there, in order to, to maintain his balance. And that's mainly him using his quads. We'll talk a little bit more about the muscle groups here. And then depending on your position again, we can talk through different lengths of running, um, different lengths of shooting. So maybe a forward won't have to shoot as far out as say a defender if they're shooting on average, we're gonna say here. And then jumping as well. So jumping for headers, um, jumping as a goalkeeper, etc. cetera there. All right. So when we talk about upper body strength, I'm just gonna go in a little bit more detail so you guys know when we're gonna be doing um, some upper body actual workouts, that these are kind of the muscle groups that we're trying to focus on. The only thing I would add into here that's especially important when we talk about um, injury prevention is the muscles in the neck. Can I, ooh, do you guys see this? My cool thing? Okay, so these muscles right here in the neck what I'll ask you first before I talk about it. Strengthening these muscles could help prevent against, against what, what injury in soccer, do you think? A collarbone? Collarbone, collarbone could be. I'm thinking of a different one. Concussion. Concussions. Yes. So we all have heard a lot about... Um, the severity of concussions, even if mild, even if it's a mild concussion, concussions are something that can really affect you. So strengthening these muscles on the front of your neck and then strengthening these muscles in the back of your neck are things that you can do to help prevent concussions really in total. And if you ever get a concussion, having stronger neck muscles there can help it be um, not as severe. Um, the reasoning for that is these stabilize your head and a lot of what concussions are is when your head moves. So if you were to get a, a hit from your head here, your head, would your head would shift the opposite way, which would make your brain kind of shift inside of your skull. And that's what a concussion is, is when your brain hits the side of your skull. So having stronger neck muscles would be able to hold off that force there and make sure your neck stays stable or your head stays stable. So we'll do a little bit with neck exercises. Bear with me, the neck exercises sometimes are kind of funny, but they help, They're, they help strengthen. The next ones, uh, your chest muscles, your pectoralis, those are here. Um, those are gonna help, just like we said, with the balance. If you ever have to hold off a defender, um, if you ever um, are doing throw-ins, things like that, keeping your balance, holding off defenders. Um, your biceps here, a lot of people like to do curls. That's what you're working when you're doing curls is biceps. 
that's another thing. Um, goalkeepers will use their biceps when they're picking up the ball or um, again with balance. Everything I'm going to say is going to have something to do with balance. So, um, And then in your upper neck and your upper back here, that's your, your traps that helps with balance because it's in the, your center of gravity. Um, your deltoids are your shoulders here. Okay, so again, balance. You're having your arms up. As soon as you pick your arms up, you're engaging those deltoids. Um, and then your triceps are on the back of your arms. All of these upper body muscles as well are helpful in, um, I know me as a soccer player, I'm not exactly proud to say it, but whenever you get pushed down, you end up on the ground and the faster you can get up, the faster you can get back to play. So when you're on the ground, just like doing a push up, you're pushing yourself up off the ground. The faster you can do that is because of those strong um, upper body mu muscles as well. All right, now we're gonna go to lower body. So these are the main muscle groups that uh, mainly these ones help with all the big movements that happen during soccer. Okay, and these muscle groups also are the main muscle groups to work on strengthening in order to prevent injuries. So injuries at the knee, injuries at the ankle, and injuries at the hip. All of these muscles around here, strengthening them is going to lower the risk um, significantly of injuring those joints. So the groin is here right by your hip bones. The, um, those, if you ever are laying on your back and you have a straight leg, and you're lifting your legs straight up, you'll feel that groin engage. Um, your hip flexors are on the inside um, of your legs, and then the hamstring is on the back of your leg, the quad is the front of your thigh, that's your biggest muscle group, and then your calves on the back of your lower leg here. Um, when we look into shooting in soccer, there's another muscle on here that or there's another muscle on your body that's not labeled here, which is your glutes, another huge muscle group. Those are super important when we're looking at shooting, keeping your balance, um, injury prevention. Um, so that'll be another one that we work on. All right, we're gonna do another breakout session here. Create one strength exercise for your arms and then one for your legs. If you can, remember back to these two diagrams pick I want you to pick one muscle so maybe it's your deltoids your shoulders or maybe it's your pectoralis your chest or your biceps um and same thing for the lower body so one exercise for the upper one exercise for the lower if you don't have weights you can get creative you can do you can pick up your dog and do dog squats or you can use cans of soup to do overhead raises you can be creative Okay, find um, two exercises and then we'll see who wants to share. All right, does anyone have any, any exercises, strength for the upper body or lower body? I do. Good, go ahead, let's see it. Um, so it's kind of simple, but I just have 10 pound weights here. And it's basically doing lunges like this. Good, with the weight. And what muscles do you feel that on, or where on your legs do you feel that? Uh, mostly my knees. So around your knee or actually on your knee? Um, 
like around my knee. Around your knee. Good. So that could be your quads and your hamstrings. Those are both above your knee. So definitely um, lunges do help, especially since you're spreading your legs further apart and you're having to balance there. So that combines a little bit of strength and balance. Any other ones? Uh, I could share one. Okay, thank you. Okay. So for my team uh, to like help our balance for warmups and like make sure that our knees don't like go like that, we work on squat jumps. So we just like bend down and then jump as far as we can to land in the squat. So it's just like that. And it just it helps like the way that you land, I'm pretty sure. Good. So a broad jump or a squat jump. Good. So mainly that's exactly right is it does help how you land and it helps you have control over your knee over both your knees. So that's another thing when we talk about coordination, you're being able to control where your knees are. Your knees should be landing straight on when you land. If they land inward or they land outward, that could be at higher risk for injury. So you're strengthening those um, quads, hamstrings, and glutes when doing squats. A good thing you could do for that is um, add some weight, whether you hold on to a weight um, or you have a weight on your back. Um, you could do, say, like 10 of those squat jumps and then you get to rest and then 10 squat jumps and adding that weight will help you really develop those muscles as well. Any others? Anyone have an upper body one? Push-ups are a great upper body one. Push-ups, um, if you want to do something crazy, handstands against the wall are a great upper body one that, that's crazy for your shoulders and your core. Okay. Let's move on here. All right, so next one, this is a huge one for soccer, okay? Because once you get to um, the official length of the soccer game, which is 90 minutes, your aerobic capacity, big word, or endurance is really tested. So we talked about endurance or your ability to endure, your ability to work for a long time um, and still be able to give your 100% effort. So when you're on the soccer field, you may want to be on the field for the whole time, but the key there is you want to be able to play and you want to still be at your highest level. Okay, so that's a lot of times why some people, why you'll get subbed out is putting on someone fresh means that they can give their 100% because they've had that rest. So what we're going to really work on that aerobic capacity or endurance so that you can stay on the field longer and still be an effective and impactful player on the field. So the higher that your aerobic capacity is, the faster that you're gonna recover. So if you make one of those um, 90 sprints that you're gonna make in a game, if you make one of those sprints, say it's a really long one, you're an outside back and you run all the way up to the uh, back post, okay? You run all the way there and it's full speed. As soon as you get there and maybe your teammate crosses the ball and it lands in the box and the other team wins possession. Where do you have to go next? You're an outside back, okay? You're gonna have to run all the way back down the field to the opposite end. So maybe you only got say like 10 seconds of rest where you were, wait where you were getting there and everyone else was getting up the field with you. Your, in your endurance is what's gonna help you recover and be able to make that sprint just as fast as you did before to get back on defense, okay? Um, a player with poor endurance, on the other hand, um, they're gonna take longer to recover before they can make that same speed sprint back, okay? So of course, it's awesome. You make that huge sprint up the field, but if you're not able to make it back on defense, um, 
that that's going to be kind of a make or break. We want you all to be able to um, give your 100% effort on everything you do. So fun fact here is some studies have actually found that they can successfully rank club standings or uh, season standings according to the measurements of each team's aerobic capacity. So I'll go on a little rant here. You can measure aerobic capacity scientifically by measuring either your player's heart rates or um, the amount of oxygen that your heart is pumping to your muscles. Um, it gets kind of complex and that's, I'll leave it at that. Um, but they figured out that they can measure each athlete. They measure their aerobic capacity and depending on what team has the highest aerobic capacity, they predict that those teams will end up higher in the rankings. That those are the people that are gonna make playoffs and they're gonna do really well in their season. So that's kind of cool, right? We all knew that endurance really affected so our soccer game, but really, really looking at this, it shows that it can affect your team's success. So then a, a question that I have for that is, be, would you guys be willing to share? What do you think that your team, how do you think your team would do on a test of everyone's aerobic capacity? Think about your team, think about yourself, think about your teammates. Um, and then think about teams that you played. Do you think that they have a higher aerobic capacity than you, endurance? Do you think they have a lower? Do you think your team's kind of average? Is anyone willing to share? My team would be ranked, I think, pretty well at an aerobic capacity test because of our entire fall season, we only had two subs. Nice. Yes, you definitely would. Playing in soccer games is the best trainer for soccer, so really good. Others? All right, thank you for sharing there. Okay, so this is a little bit of an endurance did you know. So just like I had just said, playing an actual soccer game is actually the best training for soccer. And you might think, oh, duh. But a lot of people when training for soccer think, oh, I'll just go for a long run or I'm able to run um, eight miles. So that means that I have a good aerobic capacity for soccer. When actually that doesn't, that's not the truth. That doesn't actually mean that just because you can run eight miles, that doesn't necessarily mean that you'll be able to play for 90 minutes in a soccer game. And I'll explain to you why here. So going for a long run, which I used to love to do, you go for a five mile jog around your neighborhood, okay? That doesn't train you for soccer endurance. So jogging at a constant pace will improve your ability to jog at a constant pace. So what you train is what you'll be able to do. Um, the problem with jogging at a constant pace is that it doesn't prepare you for what soccer is, right? We just talked about how soccer involves the agility piece. You're moving side to side, you're moving backwards, you're moving forwards, you're jumping, you're diving if you're a goalkeeper, you're doing throw-ins, okay? It involves all these different pieces that turn it into you're starting, you're playing, you're running, then there's stoppage, you're standing, you're jogging. There's all these different changes in um, how hard the demand is, how hard you have to work. Um, so in order to train for a soccer game, you need to make sure that your endurance training has um, quick recovery involved, um, jogging, sprinting, and then a little bit of that strength piece as well, where you're doing um, jumping and you could do some upper body in there as well. So any training that you have to do has to have some recovery piece because you want to train your heart to be able to get back down to a, a good pace where you'll be able to make that new that new speed again that new sprint okay when you're jogging around the neighborhood there's only one recovery and it's at the end okay so that's not good for training for soccer any questions on that any comments does anyone's team go for runs just straight jogging. 
you can refer them back to this, that you need to make sure that you're sprinting, jogging, and walking with some rest in there to train for a soccer game. All right, um, create an endurance exercise that includes rest. Okay, so if you have something with your specific team already that you guys do that you know, hey, this sounds good. I have sprinting, I have resting, I have jogging. It includes all of that. Um, feel free to share it. Otherwise, I'll give you 30, 30 seconds to kind of come up with a endurance exercise that includes rest. Okay, 30 seconds. Go ahead. I'll set my timer. All right, does anyone have one to share or did they come up with one? Something that maybe you have used in the past to train. Um, sometimes I do interval training on my treadmill. Perfect. Can you explain to us what interval training is? So I basically just sprint for 30 seconds and then walk for 30 and then sprint for 30, then walk for 30. Good. And if we look at the um, PowerPoint, whoops, I just want to applaud you here. Let's see. Look back at the PowerPoint and we look at the sprints. It might take me forever to get back there. Oh, there it is. Every 45 to 90 seconds is when we have a long sprint. Okay, so doing in that 30 second ish range up to 45 seconds is really simulating that you get that little bit of rest and then boom, in a soccer game, you're taking off onto a sprint and then you're getting back down your heart rate as you recover and you walk or you jog and then boom, you get right back into that sprint. So that's super good. Okay, that's uh, interval training on the treadmill. Other things. Uh, my team, so my coach gave us a workout where we were to like go running and like sprinting in between like mailboxes. And then we like um, jogged and then we walked in between them. Perfect. Good. That's one that I shared with uh, uh, younger players as well is Mailboxes are a perfect marker of, I'm gonna run three mailboxes of a jog, and then I'm gonna run four mailboxes at a sprint, okay? However however you wanna kind of cater it to yourself, um, that's a good way to measure that you're doing it in increments. You're doing some jogging, you're doing some sprinting, and then maybe you walk two mailboxes, okay? And you could do that for, if you normally play on the field, if your team has a rotation of, hey, I, I'm normally on the field for 20 minutes, a perfect way to train for those 20 minutes is to do around the block for 20 minutes. You're kind of alternating between that running, jogging, walking. Good. Perfect. Thank you, Ellie. We'll move on to the next one because we don't have a ton of time. See if I can get back there. All right. So the, 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 I don't know if this is the last one. Yes, it is. Okay. So coordination is our last one. And the video or the picture that I have here is of juggling, which is one of my favorite coordination exercises. And it's perfect. It's soccer specific. So a little fact that I have here, just after we talked about endurance, uh, the physiological load, which yes, a long word, um, but it's pretty much the, the amount of work that your body is doing increases at any speed, whether you're sprinting, jogging, walking, by about 15% when you're using the ball. So when you're actually dribbling, you're working 15% harder than you would if you were to just be doing that without the ball. 
okay? So think about that and when we talk about endurance training, okay? So sometimes, if possible, it would be good to use the ball and dribble in your endurance training. Um, if you can figure out a way to do that on a treadmill or if you can figure out a way to do that around the block, that would be perfect, okay? So just adding that in because that makes it 15% harder. Um, different coordination exercises also include footwork exercises. So anything that your coaches or that you have ever done um, with cone work, footwork through a line of cones or stationary footwork where you're with the two cones, um, dribbling, just like I said, uh, goalkeeping coordination is a lot of um, with your hands and your reaction time. And then of course, balance. So my favorite balance coordination exercises are when you try to balance with your eyes closed, okay? Um, just saying it sounds kind of silly because it sounds, oh, that's easy. But if you try to balance on one leg and then do say with your other leg, try to do maybe a pull push over and over, pull push, pull push, or outside inside with the soccer ball. And then do try that with your eyes closed. You're really honing in on that coordination between your brain and that left foot. And then also with your balance. So that's just an idea of something challenging. Um, if that's too hard, try it with your eyes open and then slowly progress into doing it eyes closed. Okay, I was gonna have you guys go, you guys can go ahead and create a tough balance exercise to improve coordination that kind of combines with footwork as well. Um, but we don't have any time to share that. So before you go though, um, later on this week on Thursday, there's gonna be no PowerPoint. It's just going to be us going through all of these um, components and we're gonna be working out. So we're gonna do a little bit of speed, a little bit of endurance, coordination, strength, balance, all of the above. Okay, so next time get ready to move. Um, and if you, if you come up with any ideas and you wanna share with us at the beginning, um, I definitely like to see what you guys have come up with based on this information. Okay, so go ahead and, and try it throughout the next couple of days and then we'll come back on Thursday um, and see what people did and we'll get into a workout. That sound good? This PowerPoint will also be up um, on the Salvo webpage, they'll put it up. So you guys can look back at it for some inspiration on what to um, base your workouts on. If you don't have any questions, you can definitely hang around if you have questions um, or comments. Otherwise, you guys are free to go. I hope you had some fun and learned some new stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.